the problem with space exploration, well, there are a whole lot of problems with space exploration, but one of the problems is having to escape Earth's gravity. And to do that, obviously we can do it, but it takes a lot of rocket thrust. Um, it's extremely expensive because of the, the mass issues of the rocket thrust of getting things up. So with biology, we have the potential to start with very low mass objects, like as little as a single cell or maybe even some genes, and take those forward into the solar system or potentially beyond, and use those to grow much bigger um, organisms that we can use for various things, whether it's, it's making um, drugs or cotton or bricks or whatever. Um, or actually just eating these organisms. But you can't really do that with a machine. You can't take a little tiny battery and hope it's going to grow once you get into space. You can do these things with life. And so this is an incredibly important technology that I think that we're going to be able to use in the future. A couple of other things that life can do. One thing is to self-repair. Again, you can't you know, take a battery, smash it over the head, and expect it to repair itself or a computer, but you can do that with life. We're constantly being assaulted by the physical environment, and yet we're able to repair the damage in our cells. We're not perfect, but we can do a lot of that kind of repair. And then the last thing is that we can replicate ourselves. And again, if you take the analogy of something like a battery, you can't put a battery or even you know, a girl and a boy battery together in a box and expect a box full in the morning. But you can do that with living organisms. And so we have the potential for replicating them as well. So that they can get bigger, they can self-repair, and they can replicate. And all those are incredibly important. Thank you. Well, there are two questions. I'll, I'll answer the easy one first. I don't think there are any eth ethical issues at all with us going out into space. Um, you know, forcing a particular individual to go into space, you know, may be ethically questionable. But if someone wants to go into space, I think that that's, you know, a terrific thing, and we will do that. There, there's no question in my mind we will continue to explore into space. You know, I was, um, I was old, 12 years old when Apollo 11 landed, and, you know, I, I remember staying up all night. I'm never going to forget that. You know, there's a whole generation of us who were really psyched, and we thought by now we would be on Mars and beyond. Um, we're not due to uh, political um, reasons, but there's nothing to do with the expansion spirit. Um, we will go out there. there there's no question. It, our, our survival as a species depends on it. Now, whether it's ethical to disturb other organisms that we might find, um, I'm not as concerned about it from everything we understand, um, the chance of anything much bigger than a microbe anywhere in our own solar system is, is very remote. I mean, there may be some sort of aquatic life under the um, ice on the um, moon of Jupiter called Enceladus, which is an ice-covered moon with a liquid water ocean, um, or um, Enceladus, excuse me, Saturn, of course, um, Europa, uh, the one around Jupiter. There are a couple of others that are potential. Um, the chance that there's something um, intelligent under there is probably fairly minimal, but there, there's a potential for some kind of multicellular life. Um, I don't see anything wrong with going there, studying them, and so on. Um, my concern actually is more of, as a scientist that I would hate to go contaminate another planet or a moon unless we knew for sure what was there and, and what was us and so on, because these would be the scientific discoveries of you know, the millennium or more. And so if we go and we mess up Mars and so that there is no Martian left because we have destroyed it, that would be an enormous scientific tragedy. Um, we would lose a lot of potential for insights even about life on Earth. And so I, I, I don't think it's an ethical issue as much as um, a scientific imperative not to disturb life until we've been able to study it. We first have to understand their genetic system because um, the, the tools that we play with in the lab here may be totally inappropriate for them. You know, we're counting on, on having DNA with a certain four base pairs and so on. But um, I don't see anything wrong with doing synthetic biology on another life form. Again, I, I think that, that many of us start to feel more queasy as you get to life forms that can feel pain, certainly something that is sentient. Um, you know, if there was even something that was the equivalent of a dog um, on a planet, I think I would feel uncomfortable without at least thinking about it before I inflicted, you know, any pain. But then, you know, we breed dogs, we breed, you know, all sorts of organisms, and we have for, you know, millennia. That's called domestication. So we have gotten over that, but, but I'm just suggesting that we might pause for a moment. 
I wouldn't think twice about genetically altering a, a seed of something that we find on Mars that was, you know, the equivalent of a seed for a tree um, that, that we knew for a fact had no intelligence, felt no pain, and so on, as long as we weren't compromising the science. Um, you know, if we were to find a, a creature that was like us, that was intelligent and so on, I think that it would be a, a totally different thing. Um, and possibly even altering some of the organisms that were on this creature's planet, because we would feel, you know, look, it's their planet, we have ours, they have theirs, and, and maybe we better negotiate it first. I'm, I'm really glad you asked that, because um, I, I, I often end lectures saying, you know, gee, I, I suspect we're going to find life out there, but what if the reverse is true and that we really are alone in our solar system, which is possible, um, or alone in our universe, which is, I think, even less likely, but it's certainly possible. I do think we have some sort of, you know, then um, ethical responsibility for the rest of the universe. I don't know what our ethical responsibility to a barren planet necessarily is, but um, certainly to other life on Earth, we do have a responsibility, and, and if there's other life elsewhere, maybe we will have some sort of responsibility as well. I just think it's a fantastic thing that you're doing. I think that this um, is a fantastic program, or else I wouldn't have invested my summer in it as well. Um, incredibly impressive. And I think this is going to be a future in all sorts of areas. And the fact that people are jumping in and, and learning these tools and technologies is fantastic. But I, I specifically chose the words in my last sentence carefully. These are tools and technologies. And if you don't understand the biology behind it, the science, um, and why you're doing what you're doing, then there's going to be a problem. If you're going to be much more powerful if you understand what life is all about and see this, again, as, as a tool. And with that in mind, you can do all sorts of amazing things and, and keep reading the papers and keep reading the journals because there's going to be fantastic things coming up the road. And I hope that everyone here is part of it.